Nikki Nalera, going along with outstanding recognition is also defensive back Desmond King. King was named one of the five finalists for the Walter Camp Foundation Player of the Year. Other finalists include Alabama's Derrick Henry, Stanford's Christian McCaffrey, Clemson's Deshaun Watson, and Oklahoma's Baker Mayfield. A very notable group of young men there, and just another thing Iowa is being <laughs> recognized for. But the biggest thing, this Big Ten Championship coming up on Saturday night against Michigan State. As this will be Iowa's first appearance in the Big Ten Championship, this is Michigan State's third time going to the Big Dance for the big game, excuse me, in five years. The Spartans won the Cotton Bowl last year in the Rose Bowl in 2014. And ex this experience te this team has a lot of experience in this atmosphere. As for Iowa, not so much, but it doesn't seem to be a factor. For more on these two teams headed in head to head, Katie Reber is standing by. Thanks, Danny and Taylor. This marquee matchup will showcase two teams that have a lot in common. Let's break these similarities down by the numbers. 66,700 fans will be at Lucas Oil Stadium to watch the 12-0 Iowa Hawkeyes take on the 11-1 Michigan State Spartans on Saturday night. Iowa's defense leads the Big Ten with 17 interceptions and right behind them in second place is Michigan State with 14. Both schools are 1-for-2 in interceptions lost, but Iowa has thrown only three interceptions while Michigan State has thrown five. Iowa and Michigan State share the conference lead with 25 takeaways takeaways and a plus 14 turnover margin. Both teams run more of a traditional style of offense and their respective stats show how this has proved successful for both the Hawkeyes and Spartans. Iowa averages 33.7 points per game and Michigan State 33.4. Michigan State converts 50.6% of its third down attempts best in the Big Ten while Iowa converts 44.2% number three in the Big Ten. Yeah, it just so happens we have two teams that are fairly similar. We're, we're different in a lot of ways, but we're similar in some ways too. And uh, you know, it's just kind of the way it's worked out. Reporting outside Kinnick Stadium, this has been Katie Reber, Daily Iowa TV Sports. Danny and Taylor, back to you at the studio. Thanks, Katie. Two very similar teams here, Danny. But with one goal, and that's winning the championship this Saturday. The winner will be guaranteed a spot in the top four in the college football playoff semifinals. I know here around Iowa City, everyone wants it to be the black and gold. And Daily Iowa TV sports reporters Mark Fry and Ashlyn Bauer checked in on some fans rooting for Iowa. Thanks, guys. The last time the Hawkeyes were undefeated was back in 1922 when Niall Kinnick was only four years old and Yankee Stadium was being built for the first time. Fast forward to 2015 and the Hawkeyes are 12-0 for the first time in school history. The Hawkeyes will try to defeat their undefeated season this Saturday at Lucas Oil Stadium in Indianapolis. We asked a few students around campus what they thought of the undefeated season and what they think of the Big Ten Championships this weekend. What's your favorite memory from this season? Uh, I'd have to say the pit game when we uh, barely sque squeezed out that win with that field goal. This has been your favorite moment so far from this season. Oh man, just honestly seeing my, my family is, are huge Iowa and Iowa football fans. So um, honestly just seeing my brother and my dad just so excited about the Hawkeyes. What do you think the score is going to be? Oh. Well, I'm, I got to say go Hawks. So I'm, I'm, I'm thinking it's going to be a low scoring game. Um, I give it, you know, maybe total of 30 points the most, so it's going to be close. I don't know. What do you think has been like the biggest key so far this year for the Hawks being 12-0? Uh, I think C.J. Beathard has really stepped up and has been doing a good, really good job, so I think he's just going to keep carrying us to more victories. Can you believe that the Hawks are 12-0? Uh, I had always wished it for it to be true, but for this to actually be happening, it's a dream come true. Are you a Hawkeye fan? Of course I'm a Hawkeye fan. What do you think the score is going to be? 28 to 31, Iowa. As you can see, Ashland, these Hawkeye fans have a lot of memories from this historic 12-0 season. These Hawkeye fans hope the memories will continue this Saturday night at the Big Ten Championships. Back to you guys. Thanks, Ashlyn and Mark. Danny, favorite memory from this season? Go. I think it has to be uh, November 14th, that grapple in the gridiron, mm -hmm. followed by the awesome game with Minnesota, so I'm going with that one. How about you? That's pretty good. I'll probably do, take it to the Pittsburgh game when Marshall King kicked the 57-yard field goal. I was running around the field. Everyone was running around the field. No idea, but that was probably definitely my favorite memory. Plenty of memories still to be made, and that includes a bowl game. 
After the game Saturday night, it'll be Sunday at noon where the bowl selection is made. And here are some predictions. Many media outlets thinking different things, but all thinking Michigan State is going to pull away with this one. ESPN has us in the Fiesta Bowl or the Chick-fil-A Peach Bowl. What are you thinking, Danny? Now I picked Iowa to win the Big Ten Championship and go to the Orange Bowl against Clemson. I'm going to go out on a limb here and say I want to go to the Rose Bowl. Pasadena's calling my name. I was named too. <laughs> Fair enough. We'll step away from football for just a few minutes for some Iowa men's hoops. Kinnick isn't the only place exciting wins have been happening. It's also in Carver. Last night, Iowa completed their ACC Big Ten Challenge with success over Florida State. Jordan Maloney has more. The Iowa men's basketball team pulled an overtime shift late Wednesday night against the Florida State Seminoles. The Hawkeyes' five starters played the Seminoles tight from start to finish, each hitting in the double digits. When getting up from what looked like a head injury in overtime, Peter Jack told the ref that he was just doing his job before hitting a three-point field goal to give the Hawkeyes the 78 to 75 point win over the Seminoles. Jack led the black and gold, putting 24 points on the board, a season high for the 6'6 junior. I'm really happy for him. He had a very good game, you know, even when he kicked it off his foot, he went back and got it, made, made a big play there. Uh, he just, he's that kind of person. He's, you know, he's not afraid of the moment and he made a big shot. Happy for him. But he wasn't the only Iowa starter with an impressive game. All five starters played for over 30 minutes each and racked up 70 of the team's 78 points. It showed a lot of leadership, a lot of fight. I mean, it just pretty much shows you how, uh, how our team is. At the end of regulation, the Hawks and the Seminoles had matching 63s on the scoreboard, but Iowa's high intensity overtime play proved to be too much for Florida State. We ain't played to our full potential yet, and uh, we just gonna keep working, but we just kept fighting and uh, came, came up with a dub. Wednesday's game in Carver was the last of the Big Ten ACC Challenge, with the Big Ten coming out on top 8-6. to six. I'm Jordan Maloney, reporting from inside Carver Hawkeye Arena with Daily Iowan TV Sports. Thanks for that, Jordan. Iowa goes on to play the University of Kansas City, Missouri it's inside Carver Hawkeye Arena Saturday afternoon. People can go to Carver to watch a little basketball, go back to the TV, to Fox to, for the Big Ten Championship. As for us, we will be in Indianapolis, so keep updated on dailyiowan.com and meet us right back here on Sunday night for the full recap. Alara and Nikki, back to you.